We created something called APS, Artificial Pancreas System, uh, approximately five years ago after we got our first grant from JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. JDRF recognized that we can use technology not so much as a cure, but to help glucose control to improve lives of people with type 1 diabetes until there is a cure. In essence, we're trying to automate insulin delivery for patients with type 1 diabetes. So they don't have to worry about how much insulin to take throughout the day and overnight, etc. Much like a thermostat in a room controls the temperature with uh, invisible technology, if you will, we want to take that same invisible technology, feedback control, put it in an insulin pump together with a glucose sensor to allow the subject to have automatic, uh, invisible, hands-free control of their glucose. So they won't need to be worrying as much about carb counting. Diabetes is uh, not just the patient itself, it's the entire family is kind of absorbed in being with somebody with diabetes. Uh, when I meet parents of young people with diabetes and they will say, oh, we can't sleep overnight because we need to measure blood glucose every so often. So with the artificial pancreas, we can ease and improve the quality of life of people. You don't need to be observing, taking care of yourself. You can enjoy your life without the need to worry about what my blood glucose will do right now. I'll describe what the system is and how it's currently working. Um, as I mentioned before, we basically have a continuous glucose monitor. So this is the receiver. And if we can lift up here, basically there's a wire under the skin here that tells how much glucose there is uh, in, under the skin. And that wirelessly communicates with the, the receiver. The receiver then sends the signal to the computer, could be a laptop, could be a phone. And then it decides, the brain of the operation here decides how much insulin to give. Then it sends that information out through another cable to this device, which wirelessly communicates with the pod. The patient gets insulin every five minutes. And then we get another reading from the sensor and it goes back through the same process over and over. Most of the problem with glucose control comes from meals. We, we talk about meals as a disturbance to the system. So if there's a big disturbance, the blood sugar goes high, the system wants to give a lot of insulin, which may put them at risk for going low later. In this project that we're doing today, we're also adding inhaled insulin. At the start of the meal, the patient can take a small dose of inhaled insulin the advantage of the inhaled insulin is it gets in right away, works very quickly. So at the start of a meal, if we can give a small dose of inhaled insulin, instead of the blood sugar going up very fast, it will go up a little bit slower, and the controller and then the subcutaneous insulin can actually work better. So this is the inhaler for the inhaled insulin. This is the insulin itself, and all you do is open it up, Line it up, drop the cartridge in, close it, and it's ready to go. It contains about 10 units of insulin, but once it gets into the body, it's about three units. And then you just take this off and inhale. It's very straightforward as far as loading the device, taking the insulin. There's no needles involved, and the insulin gets in quite quickly. And it also doesn't um, stay around, doesn't hang out for a long time. So it will act when you want it to, and then by the time the meal is over, that insulin should be going away. So you don't have to worry about having a lot of low blood sugars a couple of hours after a meal. The purpose of this study was to use inhaled insulin to get better postprandial glucose control. I'll first show you the results here from Jen's previous study where she did not use inhaled insulin and ate a 50 gram carbohydrate meal. As you can see, the excursions are quite high. I'll next show you here in green her excursions when she took a small amount of inhaled insulin at the beginning of the meal. As you can see, the postprandial exposure is approximately half that when she used inhaled insulin as opposed to when she does not use inhaled insulin. We're very encouraged by these results as it brings her glucose level closer to normal. My short experience with inhaled insulin was really almost pleasant when compared to injectable insulin because um, there's absolutely no 
no pain, no irritation. You really didn't even feel like you were inhaling anything at all. It was almost like inhaling through a whistle. I just want to um, express my tremendous uh, gratitude to the JDRF for funding this trial and my sense of excitement about this partnership with Sansum. It really is a unique marriage of uh, the medical doctors, their brilliant insights here at the clinic, with some very clever engineers over at UCSB that have partnered in a way that no other team, I think, in the, the world has been able to achieve this um, boundaryless, seamless partnership. The future is looking bright, and I think every day we come closer to not only a cure, but then also the, the stepping stones along the path to a cure, just making life easier for diabetics every single day. So hang in there, we'll get through it. <laughs>